my new dreamers who stopped by Dawn Dares to Dream today to see what we're all about. Well, let me give you a brief synopsis of what my purpose is here at Dawn Dares to Dream. My goal is to inspire and motivate adults to dream again. As we go through life, we tend to put our dreams on the back burner. And what I like to do here is to inspire you to pick those dreams back up and to pursue them again. And guess what, dreamers? I'm doing a giveaway. I know you've heard this before, but I am going to keep telling you about the giveaway. The giveaway is so special. You know how I wear my Dawn Dares to Dream t-shirts and how I wear my Hey Dreamer aprons? Yes, yes, yes. I am doing a giveaway Well, you will get your own personal apron or t-shirt. I think that's awesome salsa. So what you have to do to enter the giveaway, I need you to subscribe to my YouTube channel and then I need you to leave a comment that says giveaway, then email me at dawndaretodream at gmail.com in the subject line, write giveaway, and then leave me your YouTube handle. And I'm going to do a drawing when I reach 250 subscribers. And I need your email so that I can contact you to let you know that you've won. Yeah, yeah, won. I'm so excited about the giveaway. I'm doing that because I appreciate my subscribers. Now, if you have already subscribed to me, that is perfectly fine. You are still eligible for the giveaway. You just need to comment on a video giveaway, then go to my email, say giveaway in the subject, and in the body, leave me your YouTube handle, and that way I will enter you in to win. Now today, dreamers, we're making fish. Yes, we are. We are making baked striped bass. This dish is gonna knock your socks off. I actually made it a couple of weeks. I was supposed to do a video, but I was so hungry that I didn't. I just made it, it was scrumptious. And I told my mother we have to do it again. So we're doing it today. And this dish literally takes maybe about 20 minutes to cook and maybe five to 10 minutes to prepare. I'm gonna show you exactly how simple it is. So let me tell you what's in this dish. Of course, we have the whole fish, the striped bass. Now, when you pick the fish up from your seafood market or from your supermarket, you want them to gut and scale and score the fish. You wanna leave the fins and the head. You know the cheeks are the best part of a fish. Now, as far as what we're gonna do to the fish, we're gonna rub it down with olive oil. Again, use any extra virgin olive oil that you choose. I use the store brand. Any kind that you want is perfectly fine with me. And then we are going to salt and pepper the fish. And of course, I'm using my Himalayan rock salt. We're also gonna add some garlic powder to it as well. We are going to stuff the fish with lemon, garlic, and bay leaves and thyme. And we're also gonna place some thyme leaves on top of the fish as it bakes. Now, as you cook the fish in the oven, what's gonna happen, it's going to create its own sauce. So the drippings from the fish baking is gonna create a sauce. And that sauce, I'm telling you, is so scrumptious. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to smash the garlic, because it's smashing the garlic is going to be the thing that actually takes the longest to prepare. Now, because we are not going to mince it or anything, I'm just gonna smash it and then peel it. I'm not gonna use my garlic peeler that I have been using where I roll the garlic out. I'm just gonna smash the garlic because we're just gonna stuff the fish with it. And of course, today we have our topic that we're going to discuss you know how i have had the employment series there is a playlist and it is called employment tips there are three videos there right now i gave you 10 tips on how to interview so that you can stand out from the crowd and then i did another 
video that talked about how to integrate yourself as the new member of a team. Now, the employment tips are one video has five tips, and there's another video that has the other five tips. And today we have another employment topic, and it's called Humanize Yourself. It is very important for your employer and your colleagues to recognize that you are a whole person. So you want to share tiny bits of your life with them because it helps them to relate to who you are and it allows you to show them that you're a real person. And when it comes time for raises and promotions and things of that nature, little do you know who you are plays a major role. It's not just about the fact that you are a good employee. The promotions and raises also come out of understanding the need that you have at home, who you are providing for. All of those elements help to humanize who you are. So we're gonna go ahead and smash up this garlic. I haven't smashed any garlic in a while, so it feels pretty good. And when you smash the garlic, the skins come right off. We are not going to mince the garlic, like I said. We're gonna just keep it whole and smash like this, and we're going to place it in the cavity of the fish. But even before we place it in the cavity of the fish, we're going to rub the fish down with olive oil. Now, I chose to use striped bass because that's another fish that I like. You know, my mother loves salmon. That's her favorite fish. My favorite fish is red snapper. I also love halibut. But now, and then there's striped bass. Striped bass is a fish that I'm familiar with from working on the East Coast and working in restaurants. That's why I picked the fish. Also, I wanted a smaller fish that I could bake whole or grill whole or fry whole. When you deal with some of the other fish, they are way too large for you to do this type of preparation. So I chose the striped bass. And I said I was just gonna smash it, but I think I'm gonna rough chop it just a little bit. Now there are a few things that we can do to humanize ourselves to our boss and to our coworkers. So we're gonna set, oh, we're not gonna set this aside. We're actually gonna slice the lemon because what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some lemon wheels and we're gonna lay them inside of the fish. And then we are going to place the fish on top of some lemon wheels as well. I'm doing that so that the fish doesn't just sit in the sauce that it's gonna create because I would like the skin to crisp up just a little bit. So we're gonna take the lemon and I'm gonna slice it as thin as I can, and we're gonna use these to stick in the cavity as well. So now we're going to take the fish and we're gonna rub it down with olive oil. And I know I was talking a little bit, ooh, and be careful, because <laughs> this is a little tough. You know, in the eye and everything, this is a little sharp. And the fins are sharp as well. So we're gonna flip him or her, I don't know which it is, and we're going to place olive oil on there. Now, if you forget to get the, if you forget to have them score the fish, you can always score it at home. Because when I got this the first time, actually it wasn't scored, I had to score it myself. And it's rather easy to do, you just wanna make sure that you have a rather sharp knife. And you wanna use a knife like this, you do not wanna use a serrated knife because then you will tear this and make jagged tears in the skin and that will um, create a presentation that is not so pleasing to the eye. So after we do this, we're gonna salt it, pepper it, and we're going to put um, some garlic powder on it. And you wanna generously salt and pepper and garlic the fish on the outside and the inside. So now we're gonna do the garlic. I'm telling you, this was so tasty. And it's so simple and it's so quick. It was so quick, I was shocked. It was like in 20 minutes to 30 minutes, we were actually eating and I was in awe and the fish was done, it was cooked through. Now, of course you wanna preheat your oven to 425. I have the oven preheated already. 
because I'm trying to get this going. Because as you know, I'm already ready to eat. So we're going to open the cavity and we're going to salt and pepper the inside as well. And garlic. And pepper. So we're going to take the lemon and stick it inside the cavity. We're going to take the garlic and put the garlic inside as well. And I'm actually going to place some garlic on the outside of the fish. I neglected to tell you that we are using bay leaves and thyme as herbs for this. Now the herbs are the major component that's going to add the flavor that you're looking for. Now you are not stuck with the herbs that I've chosen. If you like rosemary better, you can put that in here. If you like dill, you can add that. If you like oregano, it's about the herbs that you prefer. Now, the last time I did this, I did bay leaves and I did thyme. And you need to know that I actually looked up a recipe and the recipe did not call for bay leaves on the inside, but I like the flavor that bay leaves add. So I stuck them in here and I'm telling you, these bay leaves, they go to work inside this fish, okay? And now we have the thyme, and the thyme and the lemon really play off of each other rather well. So you know how I usually prick the leaves and all of that? I'm not doing that, we're just gonna stick it in here whole. And last, we're just going to take the lemon and slice a little bit more, and we're gonna place it on top. And we're gonna actually place some thyme on top. We will not be adding the bay leaf on top. We're just gonna leave that for the inside. Okay, let me do one more slice. There we go. So we're gonna do the lemon like this. And we're gonna take some of this thyme and we're gonna stick it in the, the slivers of the fish. I'm gonna stick some inside there. There we go. Leave that there and then we'll put the rest on top. And we're gonna take some time and we're gonna lay that on top as well. There we go. And I'm going to bring a pan over here and we're going to wrap the fish in foil and then stick it in the oven. And remember, I'm going to lay the lemon heels on the bottom and sit the fish on there. That way the lemon flavor will be coming from the inside, at the bottom and the top. So now I'm going to take some foil, a rather large piece, because remember I'm wrapping the bath in the foil. I'm also gonna pour a little bit of dry white wine in the bottom as well, so it can kind of help to steam the fish. And you know I love my um, Santa Margarita Pinot Grigio, so that's what I have on hand. So I'm just gonna pour a little bit, just a little bit. That's probably even less than a quarter cup. So we're gonna take the fish, pick him up, and stick him on here. He's a big one. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna turn him over. I'm gonna turn him over and I think he might be a little bit more stable when I do that, let's see. Yep, see, I needed to turn them over. So my advice would be to you, the side that's the largest after they split it is the side that should be on top. And I kind of knew that, but the, the fish had flipped over. So I just figured I'd go with what how it had flipped. So we're gonna do that. And now we're going to wrap the fish. <laughs> so we're gonna wrap the fish and I'm taking it, I should hold it. Yeah, we're gonna hold it. We're gonna bring that up. There we go. And you want a tight seal on the foil because you wanna keep all of the moisture inside. I'm actually gonna add a little bit more foil to make sure that the sides are wrapped tightly. So the fish is gonna bake and steam at the same time. Like I said, I have the oven preheated at 425 
And remember I have the thin layer of wine in the bottom. So we're gonna stick him in the oven and we're gonna set the timer for 20 minutes. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about humanizing ourselves. So sharing a full picture of yourself with your employer, with your colleagues, allows them to see who you are, you know, as a whole versus just who you are at work. Like I'll give you an example. I am a single mom and most people assume that at my level of employment, at my job, that I'm married. So when I talk about my son, they're automatically assuming that I have a husband. So say there is time for layoffs. Most women usually go first because women are looked at as if we are not head of households. So if I go to work and I never communicate with them, they could just think I'm a woman who doesn't wear a, a wedding ring for whatever reason. I'm pretty conservative. I don't really wear any jewelry too much at work. Tiny, tiny makeup. I typically wear suits or I wear cardigans. Every now and then I'll surprise them with you know a dress but I really am pretty conservative. I dress mainly business, which is not required to business casual. So they don't know what in the world is going on with me unless I open my mouth and tell them. So they know that my mom lives with me and that I have a 10 year old son. They know that me and his father are in communication, but they know that he lives with me full time. And I believe that that has an impact when it comes time for layoffs because they aren't gonna let me go just because they assume that I'm not head of household. I'm gonna be in the running for people that they actually keep. You see where I'm coming from? But if you don't share people, they won't know. If you have at home a, a child with a disability or family member with a disability, or you're caring for your parents or your grandparents, that is something that you want to talk about in casual conversation because it helps to humanize you. And being humanized is a good thing. You know, this is the month of August and our theme is living life offensively. So when you're living life offensively, everything you do, you're strategizing. Even with your employer and your colleagues, you are not just going into work and you are just, you know, Mary Sue or Joe Lynn or Tom or Harry. No, you're different. And you are living life offensively, so everything that you do has a purpose. So you want to make sure that you share a little bit about yourself with your employers. Another way to have them relate to you or for them to understand who you are is to talk about where you're from. I am employed in Houston, Texas, and I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. So it's very important for me, for people to know my hometown, for them to understand that I did not grow up here in the Houston metropolitan area or even Texas or the South. Cultures are different in different regions of the country. So you can be misunderstood if you don't express that. Because I'm from Baltimore, Maryland, and because I'm from the East Coast, they understand that I'm a little bit more forward. I'm a little bit more aggressive, but it doesn't mean that I'm rude. It means that I'm different. But if you don't share, people are going to assume, well, if you were raised here, this is not how we act. This is not how we speak to people. Why are you doing this? So you want to make sure people know where you're coming from, because sometimes you'll get a pass. It's not that you won't get corrected if they think that your behavior is a little off, but they will have a better level of understanding if they know that you didn't grow up in the same environment in which they did. Sharing your upbringing is another key tip. When they understand that you had a two-parent household, your family has always taken care of the elderly, you get a little bit more respect, people. There are some assumptions that can be had culturally because they may not know people like you and people where you come from and what you have done in your part of the country or in your community. So you want to share these things. I had a colleague who just kind of assumed that my people don't take care of their own. Like we don't provide for our elderly. And I had to tell her, excuse me, ma'am, excuse me, ma'am. In my family, 
my grandmother lived with her children, three different children over time. My mother helped to care for her. I, you know, they need to understand these things. I actually have my son and my mom living with me because I want him to witness what that's all about. This is a part of our culture. I recall my uh, great grandma Noni, she was cared for by her son and lived in his home. Do you understand? But sometimes people don't know culturally what it is that you may do for your elderly. They make the assumption that from things that they've seen on TV, this is how your culture does something. And versus taking offense, let's take time to educate them because it makes them go, oh, okay. And they see you in a different light. I have two additional keys to humanizing yourself that I'd like to share. The first is you want them to understand your climb up the corporate ladder, where you went to school, if you went to historically black college or Ivy League school or whatever it was that you went, if you were athlete in school or if you didn't go to college but you went in the military and then you started your career, you want them to know that kind of thing about you. People see you in a different light. They'll have more respect for you if they understand your background. And even if it was a struggle for you, even if you were discriminated against on your way up, that's also a good story to share because in those moments, you are educating them about prejudice and racism and how it can affect a person who really doesn't deserve it. Not that anybody deserves it, but how often do your coworkers meet someone like you with your background and where you've come from? So it's important to kind of share these things because these are the moments where we can make an impact in our community that we don't even think about. Now, I did cook it about five more minutes. So I think I put it on 20 minutes. I cooked it to 25 minutes. I didn't open it up or anything. I just wanted to make sure that it was done through and through because it is a whole fish and it's not fillets. I know it may take a little bit longer and I wanted just to make sure it was right before I unraveled it because then I break the seal and it's just not the same. So if you're ever unsure, just cook it a little bit more and see what happens. So I'm actually going to garnish the plate with some more thyme leaves. And remember, we have juices in the bottom of the foil. So we want to take care with how we remove everything because we want to use the juices on the platter. to just test it smells done i'm gonna take this fork and i'm gonna stick it to see if it is done yeah it's done it's done so let's fish we're gonna place it here and i'm actually going to leave the foil as a part of the presentation because I don't want to lose any of my juices <laughs> by <laughs> removing it. So I'm just gonna take the time and just kind of lay it around the platter. So it's more of a rustic presentation. So let me show you my beautiful fish. There we are. You see that steam coming off of there? This is going to be a yummy dish. And my mom is actually going to come in the kitchen and make spinach. I love spinach and I love the way that she makes it. So she's going to come and make the spinach and then we will have a complete dish. If you notice, most times I don't really have a starch with my meals. I'm not on a low carb diet but I do limit them where I can because I do have carbs every day for breakfast and the majority of the time for lunch. I have a slice of wheat bread. 
So I try to limit it for dinner. So you don't see me eating many potatoes or rice or anything like that. That's just my way. Do as you choose. I believe this would go good with some seasoned white rice. I think it would be awesome. I really love the Mahatma yellow rice because it has a seasoning in it already. So you just have to cook it and I think it would really balance out this dish. But I just don't prefer to have rice all the time. So I wanna thank you dreamers for tuning in today. And so we have striped bass whole baked in the oven and it has like a lemon, garlic, white wine sauce. And this is such a light and healthy meal, a great way to prepare your fish. You can even prepare your fillets the, the exact same way. You just have to lessen the time because I'm quite sure the fillets will cook a lot faster. Remember about the giveaway to leave a comment that says giveaway. Also email me at dawndearsyourdream at gmail.com. Now remember my email address is going to be in the description of the post. You email me and in the subject, write giveaway and in the body, you're going to write your YouTube name and you're going to send the email to me and I'm going to enter you in the contest. You're either going to win a Hey Dreamers <laughs> apron or you're going to do a Dare to Dream t-shirt. Either way, it's a great, great prize. and It's a great way for you to remember to continue dreaming. Now, if you like this video, give me thumbs up. Remember, leave a comment. Also, share this video with your social media family and friends. You can actually share the video straight from YouTube to your Facebook page. So you just hit share and you can share straight to your Facebook page and that way everyone can see it and then they can view and subscribe if they like and that's the faster we will get to 250 subscribers. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, my face is gonna be up here in a circle. I want you to click on my face, select the gray bell, select all, and that way you will get notified for all my new content that I place up here to YouTube. Have a great day, dreamers!